Hey everybody, it's Andrew Fizekis, starstruck comms with National Geographic, also known as the Night Sky Guy. I'm here again this week talking about what's up in the night sky. And this week, uh, there's a, a few interesting things just in time for the holidays that's really worth talking about. And first up, I wanted to show what's up in the sky for tonight, basically Thursday night, December 21st, uh, solstice. Happy solstice, everybody around the world. For those of you in Northern Hemisphere, like I am, I'm talking to you from Montreal, Canada. We're celebrating, of course, the December solstice, the official beginning of winter. And for those of you that are in the Southern Hemisphere, of course, this is the first day of summer for you. Lucky you guys. I'm I'm in minus 20 degrees Celsius here in Canada. It is so cold, I tell you. I wish I was in the southern hemisphere now. But anyways, what can you see in the sky this week? Well, first off, tonight, the moon. Here I've got it set up uh, for this evening. Uh, you can see uh, the moon. Uh, if you go out uh, after local sunset, you'll probably see something like this. A crescent moon, a very, very crescent moon, waxing, it's growing and it's in a growing phase right now. Uh, two weeks from now, it will be a full moon. So actually on the uh, 1st of January, we'll have our first full moon, which will also be a super moon. Uh, and um, we'll mark actually the January, we'll have two f uh, full moons, super moons, and we'll have more about that in the coming days. So stay tuned for that. I'll actually have a guide for the January um, sky coming out soon. But right now the moon, if you go outside in the evening, you'll see a very thin crescent after sunset. Even tomorrow and the next day, you'll see the crescent moon after sunset. It is one of the most beautiful sights to be able to see the Earth's lone natural companion just hanging there in the sky after sunset. It is absolutely gorgeous. And you got to, if you've got clear skies, do take a few moments to take a look at that. That'll be a really nice sight. That's the moon right there. And if we swing the uh, sky to the um, eastern horizon, that was in the west, and I've gone over to the eastern horizon, you can see all the different constellations. But one of the ones that's worth looking at is, uh, is what's called uh, Orion. Orion is a very neat group of stars. It has uh, three stars that mark out the belt of Orion. It's right here. And those are really worth looking for. Easy to see. Three stars that mark the belt of Orion. You have Betelgeuse um, also marking the shoulder. A very bright orange star. Um, and of course, you have Rigel marking the foot of Orion. And the three stars that are the belt of Orion are in the middle. This is all going to be rising in your west eastern horizon uh, after sunset. So once it gets dark where you are, check out Orion, the constellation Orion. It's a very uh, traditional December uh, um, uh, constellation that really dominates the eastern part of the sky. So check that out. It's really, really cool. And what else, of course, before I, I leave you guys, I wanted to talk one more thing, and that is the Ursid meteor shower. You probably have not heard of this meteor shower. It does not get a lot of coverage, but it's a really cool shower because you get to see somewhere around 10 to 20 shooting stars per hour if you've got very clear dark skies away from city lights. And it's called the Ursids because it, it, it actually appears to originate out from one part of the sky called uh, the uh, Ursa Minor, the Little Bear. Uh, also, you, you might know the Little Dipper, which is the tail end of the bear. And it's near the Big Dipper. You can use the Big Dipper uh, to find it. So this is really, uh, uh, for those of you that are in the Northern Hemisphere, can see these Northern Circumpolar uh, constellations and asterisms, the asterism called the Big Dipper is the one that you want to go for. And look, using the two pointer stars, you can actually take that and draw an imaginary line to the next brightest star, and that's Polaris. Now, Polaris is the North Star, and the entire sky appears to revolve around that one 
uh, star, Polaris, over a 24-hour period. So that's the North Star. And you can use the two pointer stars of the Big Dipper to find it. Now, and that represents the tail of the Little Dipper. You can see there's the Little Dipper's uh, um, bowl right there. And this is where part of the sky that the meteors appear to radiate out from. So the shooting stars, if you trace them back, they all appear to originate out from this one part of the sky. And this is best seen um, in the early morning Saturday, December 22nd. So sometime after midnight, uh, Friday night, tomorrow night, into the early morning of Saturday morning. Make sure you bundle up if it's very cold where you are in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, and see what, how many shooting stars you can actually uh, find in, the, in your sky. This is best seen looking towards the northern sky since the Polaris, the North Star, is in the north. You'll face the northern part of the sky, look up, and you should see these shooting stars. About up to 20 per hour. Now, the Ursids in some years are known to have outbursts, meaning even more shooting stars per hour do, uh, do come out of there. Um, and this depends on this cloud of debris that Earth plows through, actually smashes through and travels through. So I've got a little model here. If you can see the Earth like that. So we've got the Earth spinning on its axis, right, like that. And, um, and, we're, and, and we're plowing into this cloud, smashing into this cloud of debris. Now, uh, Earth is turning, of course, on its axis, but we're, we're smashing into this cloud. Now, if it's dark where you are, uh, that is the time to see, of course, the meteors. And so the middle of the night, when it gets the darkest where you are, that is really the best time to see these shooting stars. And just remember, each and every one of those Ursid meteor showers, uh, meteors are only about the size of a grain of sand. Very small, but they really produce this amazing light because they are traveling very fast when they hit the atmosphere of the, of the, of the, uh, of the Earth and they burn up about 70 kilometers above our heads. That's where these particles, sand grain sized particles, are burning up. And so, um, that's the Ursid meteor shower, and that's something that you can see around the world, especially if you're in the northern hemisphere. So anyone north of the equator is really in the best position to see the Ursid meteor shower. And uh, so that's something coming out of the Little Dipper. Put that on your schedule. Put your alarm clock on. Uh, try to, if you stay up after midnight, you'll get to see some of it, and I'm hoping you'll get clear skies. And stay tuned. I'll be back next week talking about what you can see on the final week of the year. And uh, I'll have uh, my, an article, special article, about my guide for 2018. I'm going to give you a, a selection of sky events, must-see sky events that I think you guys should see, put on your calendar for the entire year of 2018. So I've picked and, and chosen some really neat uh, events, sky events, that I think you will really, really like. So that's coming up uh, next week. It should be published very soon. And of course, it will uh, I'll also have the Jan detailed January sky guide coming out on nationalgeographic.com. So do stay tuned for that. And I invite you to join me on my Facebook page, The Night Sky Guy. You'll see right above in the description of this video uh, a link to The Night Sky Guy. Just click on that after the video and you can uh, uh, follow me. I do encourage you to follow me. I'll, I produce sky charts and the latest news I share with you when you can see auroras, meteor showers, uh, planetary conjunctions where two planets appear close together in the sky. All of that stuff I cover on my Facebook page, The Night Sky Guy, as well. So I encourage you to come and join me. And I see everybody all around. Oh, yeah, about clouds and stuff everywhere. I see people from England, from Sweden tuning in. Big thumbs up. Thank you for all the thumbs up and the, and the loves. I love you guys, too. Thank you so much for for spending a few of your precious moments with me uh, every week. Thank you very much. And next week, I'll be back during the holidays. I wish all of you happy holidays, happy solstice today. And until next time, I wish all of you, of course, clear skies. Bye-bye.